Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and today I'm just going to be officially um, updating you on some more current uh, latest uh, transfer rumours um, and gossip so if you do consider a drop your likes and if you do consider a subscriber to the channel um, as always. So there was big breaking news uh, that came out um, in regards uh, to Paul Popper uh, yesterday. Uh, Paul Popper's agent uh, Riley Ola, he came out um, and told her uh, the Times that Paul Popper um, is in the process um, of leaving uh, Manchester United. Well Paul Popper um, has been absent uh, from pre-season uh, training uh, this week. Um, obviously we do know it's Real Madrid um, and Juventus uh, that are battling now uh, for um, his services so it is looking very imminent uh, that Paul Popper of course um, is going to be uh, leaving uh, the football club um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer does know how much of an imperative uh, player um, he is and I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has you know, done um, everything you know, he currently uh, can you know, to try and convince you know, Paul Popper uh, to remain um, at the football club but obviously we do know that you know the reports uh, suggest out uh, last month um, in regards uh, to Paul Popper uh, you know, they, they did basically say you know, that Paul Popper um, is seeking uh, for a new challenge you know, yeah, you, you know he publicly um, admitted, you know, that he wants to uh, leave uh, Manchester United uh, for the first time and he even did say um, at one point, you know, he was even willing, you know, to go on striker to force him um, move away uh, from Manchester United um, and all that. But like I do say, for the entirety of this window so far, you know, we have been mainly focusing um, on the incoming term and all that but I think we've also got to focus on selling players. I think, you know, we need to offload players, you know, to help us generate funds um, and rebuild uh, the squad um, and all that. And I think if we can sell the likes of Popper um, and Lukaku, that will help us with our rebuilding process and of course it um, will um, help us uh, with our uh, transition um, and all that. But I think Paul Popper's first choice preference uh, for a long time um, has been Real Madrid. I think his likely destination, um, of course, um, has been uh, Real Madrid. But we have put a huge uh, price tag um, on Paul Popper. And, you know, we've said we want him um, in the region um, of around um, £150 million. Well, initially, we indicated that it wasn't for sale. But it did say, you know, would accept a bid um, in the region um, of around um, £150 million. And even though Paul Popper um, hasn't been the, play uh, the fundamental player, um, as we all thought he would have been, I still say in this market, in this uh, day and age, I still say he's worth between £140 um, or £100. Uh, Fifty million pounds, um, and all that. Did say that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, tried offering, you know, Paul Popper the vice captain, say, you know, in a bid, you know, to convince him uh, to remain um, at the football club. Obviously, came out uh, the other week saying that we was willing to offer him a long term contract, you know, worth up to around uh, five hundred uh, grand a week, um, and all that. But obviously, you know, this isn't going to be enough, you know, to convince uh, Paul Popper, you know, uh, to remain um, at the football club. I think it did say that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Paul Popper um, are set to all talks, you know, in regards uh, to Paul Popper's uh, future, um, and all that. But now, obviously, that he's been absent uh, from training uh, the, uh, pre season training uh, this week. Uh, obviously that's added uh, more speculation um, in regards uh, to Paul Popper's uh, long term uh, future um, and all that. So we do know it is Real Madrid and uh, Juventus of course uh, that are battling out uh, for their uh, services. Um, obviously you know Juventus um, have stepped their interest up um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of uh, weeks um, and all that. Uh, but Juventus are doing good business um, in this uh, summer uh, transfer window. They're doing really, really good business. You know, they've got Anne Ramsey on the board. I think they've got Adrian Rabbit on the board. They've also got Matty uh, De Litt, um, on the board. So probably more than likely Juventus would have to offload one or two of their essential players, you know, to fund uh, the move uh, for Paul Popper because he did have four good years um, in chairman and he hasn't really replicated this form, you know, since he did uh, make uh, the return uh, to Manchester United, you know, where uh, Paul Popper um, and all that. Um, the Juventus director, you know, recently I'm um, explained how much you know Juventus uh, love uh, Paul Popper because, like I said, um, he did um, have four good years of um, chairman. But Juventus have been in negotiations uh, with his um, agent uh, Riley Ola. But I do believe his first choice preference um, is Real Madrid um, and all that. But maybe the couple of main factors reasons why Paul Popper you know wants her to leave the football club because maybe he wants to be playing amongst better players. You know he isn't playing amongst good enough players at um, Manchester United. You know maybe he wants to be in Champions League football. Like I did say, it's going to be hard for us to attract players to elite level. It's also going to be hard for us, you know to convince uh, you know uh, our key players. Uh, to stay um, at the football club um, and all that because obviously you know we're not in a Champions League of football maybe he wants to be up there winning stuff and competing and he's not experiencing uh, any of this um, at Manchester United so maybe these are the couple of main factors reasons why he probably is you know frustrated there with the lack um, of competitiveness uh, competitiveness um, is uh, Paul Pogba and all that um but like I did currently say, you know, Real Madrid um, are not keen um, on a straight cash payment because obviously Real Madrid themselves uh, so far uh, this summer um, have got uh, five players um, on the board. Um, obviously, you know, they've, they've spent um, over £300 million. Obviously, you know, the vast majority of that have got, has gone on um, Eden Hazard, who of course, uh, you know, Real Madrid uh, paid um, £150 million for. So, so Real Madrid are not keen um, on a straight cash payment. Um, I was reading uh, the Metro uh, yesterday. And it did reportedly say, you say uh, that Real Madrid had reportedly um, offered us um, around uh, £72 million. Pounds. Plus, they give us uh, the choice uh, between uh, either Gareth Bale um, or Isco. But I don't think Manchester United um, are going to uh, entertain uh, this bid um, and all that. I think Real Madrid are definitely no keen on um, including uh, Gareth Bale um, as part of the deal for them, you know, to currently uh, sign uh, Paul Popper. But Gareth Bale, you know, if, if Paul Popper does go to Real Madrid, you know, Gareth Bale, you know, could still be a part of the deal. Uh, we do know Gareth Bale has been relentlessly you know, linked to a move uh, to Manchester United and the transfer side 
saga about Gareth Bale, you know, does continue to persist. And he's been linked with a move to Manchester United since, what, 2012, 2013. And, of course, uh, the rumours um, have continued uh, to persist uh, since then. Uh, according to Gareth Bale's agent, he said Gareth Bale's got no intentions of leaving Real Madrid, even though Real Madrid uh, did say um, at the end um, of last season that, you know, this is what Zindin Zidane said. He quoted out that, obviously, Gareth Bale has no future at Real Madrid. And he also said that he no longer fits him in his plans um, at Real Madrid um, and all that. But I've got strong reservations um, about Gareth Bale, so I wouldn't be keen on him, you know, coming uh, to Manchester United. Um, I would, I probably would have took Gareth Bale um, a couple of uh, years ago um, and all that, but, yeah, you know, the couple of main factors is why I wouldn't want him at Manchester United. I don't want him as part of the deal uh, with Paul Popper because obviously, you know, he's too um, injury prone. Plus, um, his age up is nearly 30 years of age. But like I said, despite the fact that Gareth Bale um, is injury prone, you know, his um, ratio is still very, very good. You know, he's scored 102 goals in 231 games uh, for Real Madrid. You know, he's got three years left on his contract still with Real Madrid, but he has been inconsistent for Real Madrid um, in the last uh, couple of uh, seasons. He has been at Real Madrid uh, six years um, and all that. We do know he can play on the left. You know, he can um, also play on the right. And obviously, Manchester United I'm in search for the winger, but I think there's better solutions um, out there than Gareth uh, Bale. But Real Madrid doing everything they can, you know, to work and um, offload him. So Real Madrid want to include Bale as part of their pursuit as part um, of their pursuit um, of Paul Pogba um, and all that. So, yeah, so Real Madrid are looking to include a couple of their players, you know, to get um, a deal um, over the line uh, for Paul Pogba um, and all that. But Paul Pogba did admit a while back, you know, he classified Real Madrid um, as one of the uh, biggest clubs um, in the world. Um, he classified Real Madrid as one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. And then um, he did say, I think at some point in his career, you know, he wants to wear a play uh, for uh, Real Madrid um, and all that. But we do know Paul Popper's agent, you know, Mini Raliola, has been in the process of finding Paul Popper um, a new club, um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of months. Paul Popper, like I said, has still got two years um, on his current deal uh, with Manchester United uh, with an option um, of a year. So he's got two years left on his current contract uh, with an option of, uh, um, of a further year. Um, I think Paul Popper last season, you know, made four to seven appearances um, in all competitions, scored sixteen goals and provided them eleven assists. And since he, he rejoined Manchester United uh, back um, in two thousand and sixteen, he scored thirty one goals um, in one hundred and thirty uh, in one hundred and thirty five games. And of course, uh, for the club, um, he's won the Europa League um, and the League Cup. And of course, that came um, in his uh, second season uh, with Manchester United. Um, obviously, Paul Popper um, is um, our most um, expensive player, but Paul Popper's been subject to a lot of transfer speculation, you know, especially uh, last year under Jose Mourinho. Where I think. Because, you know, there was obviously talks about him going to Juventus last year. I think there was also talks about him, you know, going out to Barcelona back in January because he had a bad relationship with Paul Popper. Uh, he had a bad relationship, sorry, yeah, with Jose Mourinho. And obviously, Paul Popper got one of his best wishes uh, when Jose Mourinho, of course, uh, departed um, the football club. So, I do believe that Paul Popper is going to be definitely leaving. His agent, Riley Hall, of course, um, has confirmed that Paul Popper um, is in the process um, of leaving Manchester United. And, of course, um, he's set to uh, submit um, a transfer request um, and all that. But, like I said, the stories uh, broke out about this uh, last month. You know, he admitted that he's seen Seeking for a new challenge, Pogba wants to leave basically in order to rejuvenate um, his career. But I think his first choice preference um, is definitely nowhere Real Madrid. Uh, like I did say with Isco, um, I like um, Isco um, a lot. But like I said, I think if Isco did come to the Premier League, I think he would succeed and he would exceed um, expectation levels. But I just, if, I think if he came to Manchester United, you know, it just wouldn't fit um, our system. You know, Isco. If I'm going to be uh, quite honest with you, and obviously Isco has been subject to quite um, a bit, quite a lot of uh, transfer speculation because reflecting on last season, um, most of his appearances, you know, came um, on the bench. You know, did um, Isco. Uh, especially um, under uh, Santico uh, Salori and obviously Real Madrid may have to offload um, a couple of their players you know, to make room you know, uh, for uh, Paul Popper but he did say they included his scores part of that £72 million uh, they had offered us but Manchester United I don't think um, are interested um, in the deal um, his scores being at Real Madrid six years um, obviously he spent the entirety so far um, of his, of his uh, career um, in Spain but I just don't think he'd fit um, our system or his score. if he went to like a Man City or Liverpool I think his score would probably uh, fit their system but I don't think he'd fit Manchester United system his scores 27 years of age, he's highly experienced, you know, he's still got a lot of development in him, I think he's primarily an attacking midfielder, but has played in various other positions, of course, uh, when he was uh, younger, I think Isco still under contract over Real Madrid um, until 2022, um, but yeah, there has been a hell of a lot of uh, talks about it going on. So BBC Sport actually reported on this uh, yesterday, saying that reportedly no, po you know, Paul Popper's agent Riley has come out and said, you know, basically that Paul Popper, you know, wants uh, to leave uh, the football club. And he's actually you know, not notified uh, the Times um, about uh, this. But like I said, the huge, uh, you know price tag we put on Paul Pobby, you know, that seems to be the stumbling block at the moment of Paul Pobby, you know, making his proposed uh, move uh, to Real Madrid or his uh, proposed uh, move uh, to Juventus, but it's very, very essential that we do uh, get um, a replacement uh, for Paul Pobba. 
So we do know Ligon and Solskjaer did initially say, you know, he was looking to bring um, at least uh, five uh, new um, additions uh, to the squad. Uh, like Akumli um, said, you know, we have got two players uh, so far um, on the board uh, this summer. Obviously, we've got Daniel James there uh, for £18 million. Um, obviously, we've got Anwan Saka in a deal with him um, around uh, £50 million. Pounds. So if you want to include the add-ons, that's taken Ligon and Solskjaer's next spend um, so far uh, this summer um, on 60... Uh, yeah. Taking Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's next spend um, up to around £68 million uh, so far uh, this summer if you want to um, include uh, the add-ons and obviously it's our first two signings um, under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era like I said but now obviously Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to want to build on this and he's going to want to bring at least three more new additions to the squad and I do believe now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's priorities is to recommend an experienced centre half in he wants to get an experienced central defender and also add uh, reinforcements um, in that uh, midfield because you know like I said we need to sell players you know, before we can currently buy in my opinion because allegedly we've only been given a £100 million pounds and obviously a hundred million pounds isn't enough for us you know to address the deficiencies in the squad obviously isn't enough for us to get the number of players there that we do currently want in but I thought initially you know we had uh, been uh, given around 200 odd million pounds Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as you all know has worked out his transfer strategy obviously he wants to develop a squad um, of young hungry homegrown uh, talent and I do believe you know we are actually you know moving away uh, from the policy you know of uh, signing uh, them well um, established uh, players and I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes he's following a policy you know that proved uh, successful um, under um, Alex Ferguson um but um, yeah, Solskjaer, you know, does want to, want to uh, recommend a um, number of uh, young players uh, to come in. Um, I think quite a lot of people have said, you know, we should be a uh, sensible uh, by recruitment uh, this summer and all that. But I think we need to see vast improvements going on into this season. Because last season was a very disappointing, you know, we finished sixth, you know, we didn't uh, win uh, many silverware. But we haven't won any silverware um, in the past uh, couple of uh, seasons. Um, so I think our expectations going into this season probably will be to finish in the top four. But I do believe in the next couple of seasons, um, our aspirations, you know, will be at that top four, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, I think at the moment City strides ahead of us, obviously Liverpool strides ahead of us and it's very imperative you know, that we catch up uh, with the likes um, of Manchester City um, and Liverpool um, and all that, but yeah, I think going on to next season, um, our expectation you know, will be at that top four. Um, but like I currently said, I did say um, at the start of this week, um, I'm very, I'm hopeful that Manchester United you know, can get two deals uh, concluded uh, this week. I did uh, this week, and I did, like I said, uh, say that um, on Monday. But obviously, that's obviously known that my hopes now um, have gone um, out of the window. We may, we may not even get one player on the one player um, on the board. Uh, you know, by the time we do go on pre-season tour um, in Australia, I think we do go on tour in Australia. Is it uh, tomorrow? We go um, on pre-season uh, tour. But uh, I think Charles, I did say from his own perspective, he did say uh, at some point this week he wanted at least one sign them um, on the board. You know, before we did uh, go um, on pre-season tour um, in Australia. Want to give you some additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Sean Longstaff. Now, obviously, Solskjaer did say, I think, um, earlier on uh, this week that I, um, he instructed Manchester United uh, to get um, a deal uh, completed uh, for Sean Longstaff now uh, sometime uh, this week. Now, we partly did say, you know, we were uh, prepared to put a bid in for him around uh, £15 million, pounds, um, including add ons. Initially, the first has been a change of scenery now. Initially, the first, Newcastle did say, you know, they well, they wanted around £20 million, pounds, um, including add ons. And all the Solskjaer instructed. Manchester United, you know, just to basically meet what Newcastle um, are demanding. So initially, Sean Longstaff was valued for, valued from between twenty five uh, to thirty uh, million pounds. Now, according to Sky Sports um, and all that, Manchester United um, are preparing to put um, a bid in for uh, Sean Longstaff. So obviously, now we are stepping up, stepping up um, our interest. But now Newcastle have indicated out that Sean Longstaff um, is not uh, for sale, and reportedly Sky Sports News um, have been told that Sean Longstaff is going to cost Manchester United more than fifty million pounds. So reportedly, Newcastle have indicated he's not for sale. And the one Newcastle reportedly you know want them um, at least uh, fifty eight million pounds. So actually now we could actually you know withdraw them um, our interest now. Uh, Newcastle have put this extortionate amount um, on Sean Longstaff because that's quite quite a lot of money you know fifty million pounds for a player that um, has got a little bit of experience but obviously you know um, hasn't got, got a lot of ex experience because obviously he only broke into Newcastle senior uh, squad you know in December um, of last year you know when he currently uh, made um, his debut and last season was his first season um, in Newcastle's uh, senior uh, squad. But yeah, Oligan Solskjaer does want to uh, get. Um, a deal um, over the line for him. Um, obviously, he's 21 uh, years of age. Obviously, you know he's British, and it's been quite a few British players on our agenda this summer. Because obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to recruit uh, British uh, talents uh, to Manchester United um, and all that. Um, obviously, um, I still believe he's regaining uh, full fitness. Is Sean Longstaff because obviously, you know he had sustained an knee ligament injury back um, in March. Obviously, he didn't play the last couple of months um, of last season due to this injury. Um, he had uh, currently uh, sustained. He's got four years left on his contract with Newcastle, so he's under contract with them um, until 2022. And he recently, you know. 
signed uh, this new contract. But last season, um, he thrived um, under Rafa Benitez's uh, guidance. I think he did put some good performances out, and I think he played around um, 11 games uh, for Newcastle uh, last season. Um, initially, um, he began his uh, career with Newcastle, uh, did uh, Sean Longstaff. He also had loan spells uh, with Kilmarnock um, and Blackpool. But I think Manchester United um, have been in talks uh, with Newcastle over uh, getting um, a deal uh, concluded. So looking, looking at you no. Know, Looking at ultimately, you know, it's been looking likely, you know, he's going to be um, our third time uh, this summer. But now there's actually been a change of scenery because Newcastle, I think, have looked anywhere to offload him um, and all that because they've said they would want um, at least um, around uh, 50 uh, million uh, pounds. But I did say we have been given a boost um, in our pursuit um, of Sean Longstaff, you know, following the, you know, the departure um, of Rafael Benitez. But like I said, Solskjaer wanted to get, you know, wants to get the deal completed uh, for Sean Longstaff uh, this week. He did say that um, at the beginning um, of this week, you know, did um, Ole and Solskjaer. But 21 years of age, obviously Manchester United, you know, probably would see him um, as, an, as an adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Popper but now reportedly Newcastle want £50 million pounds. we could withdraw um, our interest um, in Sean Longstaff um Want to give you some additional um, information um, in regards uh, to Bruno Fernandes uh, from Sport and Lisbon. Now we do know talks um, have been ongoing, you know, between Manchester United and Sport and Lisbon, and he's, uh, you know, on Bruno Fernandes' rep representatives uh, for quite uh, f uh, some time now um, and all that. Because obviously Bruno Fernandes um, has been uh, one of our uh, main uh, priority uh, targets. Um, obviously, as it did confirm uh, earlier on uh, this week that Bruno Fernandes um, agent um, had actually you know, travelled uh, to uh, the UK, you know, to, to allegedly thrash out a deal with Manchester United uh, for um, his client. So Bruno Fernandes' um, agent is basically you know, looking for the best possible deal uh, for um, his current uh, client. I think he has, you know, had quite a few uh, negotiations, you know, with some of the, you know, with some of the Premier League clubs. He's held talks with Manchester United. I think he's held talks with Tottenham. You know, he's also uh, held uh, talks uh, with Liverpool uh, and all that. But actually, reports reflected out um, earlier on uh, this week. You know, they basically said now allegedly Manchester United um, are only in the running to sign Bruno Fernandes because it did say Liverpool had withdrawn their interest. It also said uh, Tottenham had withdrawn uh, their interest. Um, obviously, reflecting back, uh, was it seven? weeks ago it was looking likely Manchester City uh, were going to get a deal uh, concluded uh, for Bruno Fernandes but obviously you know, it got uh, confirmed that City um, had withdrawn uh, their interest but I think Manchester United um, have been considered the favourites to sign him um, at least for the last uh, three to four weeks or maybe um, even uh, longer uh, than that um, I don't think we've, we've, yet, we've uh, actually yet, you know, put a formal bid in uh, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. Um, obviously, reports uh, came out um, on Monday. Um, obviously, this was coming from the Italian press, and it did say we'd held negotiations with Bruno Fernandes' uh, representatives, and it reportedly said personal terms have been agreed. Manchester United have reached an agreement uh, with Sporting Lisbon, but the stumbling block um, at the moment is the actual fee because Manchester United have not yet, you know, come to an agreement um, on a fee uh, with Sporting Lisbon. Like I said, that seems to be the stumbling block because Sporting Lisbon um, have said, you know, they want um, around what fifty. Five million pounds. I think the Sporting Lisbon uh, president came out and said, you know, Sporting Lisbon, you know, would accept probably around uh, fifty-three uh, million pounds um, and all that. But I think, you know, we want to get him uh, for just um, around uh, thirty-two uh, million pounds. But obviously, you know, Sporting Lisbon, you know, will not um, entertain uh, this bid. But I was reading, like I said, um, I was reading their uh, reports uh, yesterday, and it did uh, basically uh, say um, that uh, Bruno Fernandes um, has been uh, seduced uh, by Manchester United. Obviously, this is reflecting on what we've offered. So reportedly, we've offered around uh, four point five million a season to five. 5.3 million a season um, in wages to Bruno Fernandes. Now, I think now we've made this offer, you know, he's uh, keen um, on making a move uh, to Manchester United. But I do believe there'll be more extensive talks with Man United and his representatives um, and all that over uh, coming to um, an agreement um, on a fee. But I like uh, Bruno Fernandes um, a lot, you know, primarily an attacking midfielder, you know, only at 24 uh, years um, of age. Um, only had 24 uh, years of age. Um, obviously, you know, we are seeing him um, as an adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba. Um, still under contract uh, with Sporting Lisbon until 2023. I think he did sign um, a five-year uh, contract uh, last summer. But Bruno Fernandes um, has been subject uh, to a lot of uh, transfer uh, speculation. Um, I said he served a couple of years um, in Portugal with Sporting Lisbon. Done really, really well. Obviously, spent the majority of his career um, in Italy when he was younger. You know, the likes of Sam Pandaria um, and Underneath. I think he also played uh, for Novria. But I've just been reading the sports uh, review and they've said Manchester. Manchester United um, and Tottenham um, are ready, are ready, you know, to currently uh, submit 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 uh, bids, you know, for uh, Bruno uh, Fernandes. But I think his preference is actually you now um, a move uh, to Manchester United. So basically, I think we should just meet, you know, what Sporting Lisbon um, are currently uh, demanding. Um, I think we should just pay the fifty three million pounds, you know, what they are currently uh, demanding. Because look what we did last summer, you know, we paid fifty million pounds uh, for Fred. And let's be honest, you know, Fred. Um, 
Fred um, isn't uh, worth uh, you know fifty million pounds. Well, of what he hasn't really pr produced and delivered um, at Manchester United. You know, he hasn't got a great pedigree, Fred. And you no, know, don't get me wrong. You know, Fred did really, really well at Shakhtar Donetsk. To be fair, he was a fundamental player at Shakhtar Donetsk, but he hasn't really replicated uh, this form um, at Manchester United. He did prove himself towards uh, the back end um, of last season, but I still don't know if he's uh, the long term uh, solution for Manchester United. You know, where uh, Fred? So Fred, yeah, he's uh, one of our um, most um, expensive signings, and and you can't put you know Fred in Bruno Fernandes' uh, caliber um, or level, but Bruno Fernandes is a brilliant. brilliant Brilliant player, you know. Last season he scored, I think, what 31 goals in 50 games for, for sport, and he's been um, in all competitions. You know, if he came to, comes to Manchester United, he's going to rejuvenate the team. He's going to bring his um, goals that we need in that midfield. You know, he's going to have the depth um, in that uh, midfield. So I, I don't think you know Bruno Fernandes to Manchester United. Obviously, you know it won't be made um, official uh, this week. I think we'll be hoping to you know you know make you know we'll be hoping to um, get the deal uh, finalised there uh, for Bruno Fernandes. You know, maybe uh, sometime uh, next week. But we have got to uh, come to um, an agreement um, on the fee, and this is obviously you know the stumbling block. Uh, like I said um, at the moment but it came out the other week saying that we was in negotiations with Bruno Fernandes' agent we've been in negotiations with his agent uh, quite um, a lot you know over, get, over, coming to, um, over getting um, a deal uh, finalised so yeah really really like him um, a lot and he will dramatically um, improve us um, in that uh, midfield so like I did say I do believe our next two signs are probably going to be Sean Longstaff and Bruno Fernandes but now there may be a bit of changes seen now that Newcastle have said you know that he's, he's not for sale and you know he's going to cost us more than £50 million pounds. Sky Sports News um, have been uh, um, informed um, about this so at this actually man may where withdraw them are interested in Sean Longstaff. Um Obviously, as well as I've been updating you on a regular basis, tell you that you're telling you guys, you know that Manchester United, um, of course, uh, do uh, need um, a central uh, defender. You know, we do need someone that can go um, alongside uh, Victor Lindelof um, in our back line. And you know, I've heard quite a few Manchester United fans uh, saying, well, the vast majority of Manchester United fans saying that we need uh, two uh, central defenders because obviously Smalling's not good enough. You know, Phil Jones um, is not good enough, and Smalling and Jones have been two long-serving uh, players at um, the club. Smalling's been here nine years, Jones um, has been here eight years, and they've both been here since the Alex Ferguson era. But you know, they're just no longer good enough now to represent Manchester. Manchester United. It was bad business for Manchester United, you know, giving Small and, um, and Jones, you know, new long term uh, contracts. So, you know, um, obviously we've got Eric Bay, and I think Eric Bay is a very, he's a very imperative player for Manchester United. I think he's got great potential, and he, he's really, really good. When he's fully fit, you know, he holds his line well, he shows that ability to play out from the back. But I think with Eric Bay, I think he's. Manchester United career has been badly affected, you know, the amount of injuries he's sustained, um, obviously with his fallout um, on the managers. Obviously, initially, um, he's in uh, first choice um, anymore, um, Eric Bay. <laughs> So some people said we need uh, two uh, central uh, defenders because we haven't had a world-class central defender, you know, since we had the likes of Vidic and, of course, since uh, we had uh, the likes um, of Ferdinand. But like I said, um, obviously, you know, last season we conceded 54 goals in 38 uh, Premier League uh, games uh, last season. That's our highest total in 40 years. So that just proves uh, the deficiencies, you know, we have uh, got uh, defensively um, and all that. So we do know there's been so many uh, central uh, defenders um, on our uh, current um, agenda now. As you all know, there's been um, a lot of talks going on um, about Harry Maguire, um, especially uh, this week. You know, uh, it's been circulating a lot um, around uh, the media um, in regards uh, to Harry Maguire. Now, I do believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has identified Harry Maguire um, um, as his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target. Um, I read in a recent uh, report, and it did, like I said, it said uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has asked um, our British players um, in our squad, you know, about their thoughts um, about Harry Maguire. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to know a bit more about him before. You know, he does uh, before we do step up um, our interest um, in a player, and obviously, you know, uh, all the British players in our squad, you know, did did give um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer you know, positive uh, remarks um, about um, Harry Maguire. Um, I think Mike Phelan um, has instructed Manchester United you know, to get um, a move uh, completed uh, for Harry Maguire. Obviously, Mike Phelan's keen on reuniting with the player because actually, um, Harry Maguire, you know, did play um, under Mike Phelan's uh, guidance. You know, uh, obviously, when Harry Maguire was at Hull, and of course, when you know um, Mike Phelan uh, was at Hull, because obviously, Mike Phelan had a short tenure uh, with Hull, so he may be keen on reuniting there with Harry Maguire um, I was reading their reports uh, yesterday again about it it did say Manchester United um, are in pole position to sign Harry Maguire because obviously you know, City um, are reluctant you know, to meet what Leicester um, are currently uh, demanding I do believe Leicester uh, want um, at least um, in the region of around uh, £75 million pounds. Um, Obviously, you know, Sky Sports uh, reported um, earlier on uh, this week. You know, they said you know we had lodged a bidding of Har uh, we lodged a bid we lodged a bidding uh, for around uh, seventy million pounds uh, for Harry Maguire. This is this came out uh, from Sky Sports, but obviously, you know, this is um, too um, insufficient uh, for Leicester, uh, and this is too um, insufficient uh, for Leicester. Um, 
because like I said, Leicester will, uh, want um, at least down around uh, £75 million. Pounds. So the £70 million offer, of course, um, have been uh, turned down. Sky Sports also mentioned that talks have been ongoing, you know, between both Manchester clubs um, and Leicester, you know, uh, for uh, several uh, weeks. But no deal has come to an agreement yet, you know, no fear out, um, has come to um, an agreement. But I do believe now Manchester United um, are in pole position, you know, to work in the um, signing. Um, obviously, reports uh, came out uh, towards uh, the back end um, of last week, and, uh, you know, they basically said, you know, we'd withdrawn uh, our interest, you know, based on the huge... Uh, um, you know, uh, you know, fee that Leicester um, are demanding because he did say allegedly last week that Leicester wanted around a hundred million pounds. You know, he said they wanted ninety million um, up front. You know, with uh, ten million um, in add-ons. So he did allegedly say Manchester United had withdrawn their interest. Uh, with Manchester, uh, with Manchester City, um, it was looking likely. You know, they was in pole position uh, to sign Harry Maguire the other week. It did say they were set to sign him for a world record fee of eighty million pounds. Obviously, that would make him the most expensive defender in world football ahead of uh, Liverpool's uh, Virgil Van Dijk. And it also said City were willing to pay him around two hundred and eighty. Uh, Grand the week because City have identified uh, Harry Maguire um, as their number one target, you know, to replace uh, Vincent uh, Company. And it did allegedly say, you know, how well actually Harry Maguire's uh, preference um, is actually you now um, a move uh, to Manchester City. But of course, some uh, negotiations are a stumbling block, you know, between Manchester City um, and Leicester because obviously, you know, uh, Manchester City um, are not willing to meet, you know, what Leicester, of course, um, are currently demanding. And I think City at the most are only willing uh, or are, on, are only uh, willing uh, to pay um, around uh, £65 million pounds, uh, for um, his services. But like I said, it has been mainly Manchester United and Manchester City uh, that have uh, been uh, battling out uh, for their um, services. Obviously, it did say Arsenal, you know, tried to hijack um, our move. It said the other day that Arsenal, you know, put a bid in for him um, around uh, £50 million. Pounds. Obviously, this is around £35 million pounds less, less than what Leicester um, are demanding. Um, but obviously, you know, Arsenal have got issues uh, defensively. Arsenal have got a tight budget this summer. They've only got around 40 or £45 million pounds to spend. But so Arsenal themselves will need to sell players, you know, to help them generate funds um, and rebuild their, their squad. But I love Harry Maguire a lot, you know, very good central defender, very, very good um, in the air, holds his line well, you know, shows that ability, you know, when to play out from the back. You know, he doesn't, he's not really fast, Harry Maguire, but I don't believe uh, that is um, an issue. Um, but yeah, he's, he's, you know, he's got, I think he's definitely got all the attributes, you know, to come and uh, succeed um, at Manchester United um, if he does come in. And I think Harry Maguire did indicate how, you know, he wants to go to one of the top six clubs to obviously, you know, rejuvenate his career. Obviously, you know, wants to be playing amongst better players, wants to be in Champions League football um, and all that. Obviously, I know Manchester United can't offer him Champions League football and Manchester City can but if we're willing to outbid you know Manchester City then it will convince you know Leicester were to offload him but analysing it you know and looking at it Leicester don't even want to sell Harry Maguire because Leicester know how much of an imperative player he is Leicester don't even want to sell him this is the main factor reason why they've priced him out of the market this is why they demanded him an extortionate amount for him but I think Harry Maguire has notified uh, Leicester you know that he does uh, currently uh, want to uh, leave I do believe Leicester um, are on the brink of getting Yari Tillemans um, I think yeah they are on the brink of getting Yari Tillemans are they getting that Pereres uh, from Newcastle um, if I'm right so um but yeah, I think Harry Maguire anyway, you know, has confirmed, you know, he doesn't uh, want to uh, be um, at Leicester. Harry Maguire's been at Leicester for a couple of seasons. Um, obviously, he's made 76 appearances for them um, in all competitions. Obviously, 69 um, of those appearances um, have come um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously, he signed a new long-term contract with Leicester last summer. So, he's in the contract with them um, until 2023. Leicester did pay around £17 million uh, for um, his services uh, from uh, Hull City. And he did serve a couple of years with Hull. Like I said, he played under Mike Feeling for a bit. Um, obviously, he had a loan spell with Wigan. And actually, um, as a youngster, um, he began his uh, career uh, with Sheffield United you know was a product um, of their um, academy and I think he went on to play around 166 games uh, for Sheffield uh, United you know Harry Maguire uh, but Harry Maguire's 26 years of age so he's still in his prime he's still got a hell of a lot of uh, development um, in him uh, plus um, he's British and I think he's regarded him um, as definitely one of the best uh, centre halves um, in the Premier League because I think his performances for Leicester um, have been uh, very very um, impressive but Harry Maguire has been relentlessly linked with a move uh, to Old Trafford you know um, obviously Harry Maguire you know uh, was one of the players that Jose Mourinho you know wanted uh, last summer and actually our priority last summer was to get a centre back in but obviously the board weren't back in the signs that Jose Mourinho you know, wanted to recommend uh, to come in uh, to the club but I think Leicester said they wanted around £75 million pounds for him uh, last summer and of course you know Manchester United uh, were reluctant you know, uh, to pay that but I do believe now Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has identified Harry Maguire as his uh, number one uh, defensive uh, target and um, there's been so many central defenders on our agenda like I said I think Cullo Barley now um, is out of the equation because I think Napoli you now are reluctant uh, to sell him with Matty still it um, I think um, he's, he's going to be uh, going uh, to you Ventus, I'd say he's out of the equation. Um, 
Obviously, we do know there's been a lot of talks around about Issy Diopper from West Ham. Um, I was reading in reports about him um, earlier on uh, this week, and he did reportedly say, you know, we are preparing to put our first formal offer in for Issy Diop. Uh, looking at it from a financial point of view, um, Issy Diop, you know, probably would be a cheaper solution than Harry Maguire, would be a cheaper solution than Kulabala from Napoli. Um, but it does say Manchester United um, have been in for him um, at least uh, for the last uh, couple of weeks, and he did say um, Issy Diop um, is keen um, on making a move uh, to Manchester. Uh, to Manchester United but I think West Ham um, are reluctant to offload him and it did say if West Ham were willing to sell him you know they would want um, at least um, around uh, £68 million pounds for him it did allegedly say uh, last month that we'd reportedly offered West Ham a player plus cash offer and it reportedly said you know we'd offered £45 million pounds, plus we'd offered Phil Jones um, as part of the deal but West Ham didn't entertain this bid you know they instantly uh, turned uh, this bid down uh, did uh, West Ham so now reportedly we are set to put um, a £45 million pound offer in for him it did say earlier on this week but I think this will be too insufficient for West Ham so I do believe West Ham will turn it down. Um, obviously, you see Diop um, has had a year um, of experience um, under his belt um, in the Premier League. Obviously, last season was his debut season um, in the Premier League and last season, I think he played 33 games in the Premier League, 38, um, he made 38 appearances um, in all competitions. Uh, West Ham did get him last summer from Toulouse for around £22 million, pounds, but he is um, only a 22 uh, years of age. He's, um, he's very tall, he's six foot four, so I do presume he's very, very good in the air. He's also a very, very good athlete. Um, he did come out uh, the other week saying that allegedly West Ham wanted Anthony Anthony Martial um, in exchange uh, for Issy uh, Diop. So, do you think Issy Diop uh, would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United? Um... Do you think Issy Diop uh, would be uh, the right uh, solution uh, for Manchester United? So, yeah, very, very essential, you know, that we do uh, get um, a central uh, defender in. You know, I've, I've still been hearing people talking about Toby Ardweireld uh, from Tottenham. We do know he's available for a reasonable uh, figure uh, this summer. He's only he's available for £25 million, uh, Mr. Toby Ardweireld. Obviously, going back in January, or was it last year, that Tottenham obviously, you know, triggered... Um, a 12 month um, extension, you know, and they included uh, this 25 uh, million release clause, you know, reflecting, um, on, it, reflecting on his refusal uh, to sign um, a new contract uh, with Tottenham. And Manchester United have been in there for Toby Alderweireld, well, but I don't think it's in Elegant Solskjaer's plans, you know, to uh, recommend him uh, to come in because obviously he's aging up now, he's Alderweireld, you know, he's 30 and all that. Um, he has uh, lost uh, that yard um, of pace. And, you know, he has demonstrated in his four years he has been with Tottenham that he can hold his line well, he shows that ability to part uh, from the back. And I still believe now, you know, he would be a great um, upgrade um, in our defence and what we've uh, currently uh, got. But obviously there's other. Um, options um, on our um, agenda but like I said looking at it from a financial point of view how the Rayworld is going to substantially cost a lot less than how Maguire is going to substantially cost a lot less than Kulabala from Napoli and all that um, so yeah he's available uh, for um, reasonable uh, figure but I don't think of what I've known recently anyway Manchester United um, have got any intentions um, of currently you know, going in for him but um, like I currently said, it's very, very essential, you know, that we do get some uh, reinforcements um, in that midfield. Like I said, uh, you know, Bruno Fernandes, Bruno Fernandes. I hope we, you know, we can get him um, a deal um, on the line for him. Um, I think the vast majority of Manchester United fans uh, would like to uh, see uh, James Madison uh, coming uh, from Leicester. Um, I do believe Manchester United um, are still in there for him. Um, I allegedly said that James Madison um, is interested um, in making a move uh, to Manchester United. Again, I think James Madison, you know, would be a good adequate uh, replacement uh, for uh, Paul Popper. Um, obviously, uh, it was James Madison's first season um, in the Premier League. You know, last season, um, it was his debut season in the Premier League last season uh, with Leicester. But last season, he demonstrated that he can score goals, he can create, he can create chances. Because last season, James Madison created more chances uh, than any um, other player um, in the Premier League. Um, obviously, you know, Leicester did get him uh, last summer from Norwich uh, for around uh, twenty million. Pounds. He's got four years remaining on his contract with Leicester. He's primarily um, an attacking midfielder. You know, he's um, only had 22 uh, years um, of age. But I think quite a few teams have been tracking, you know, uh, James uh, Madison since he was um, a teenager um, at Coventry because obviously, you know, he began his uh, career yeah, with Coventry. Um, like I said, he had a good couple of scenes in the Championship with Norwich. I think he also had the loan spell um, in Scotland there with Aberdeen. Very, very good player. But he did like just say, you know, he's interested in making a move uh, to Manchester United um, with James uh, Madison. Uh, but I do really, really like him um, a lot. But I think even if Paul Popper was even if Paul Popper did stay at the club which we know he's not gonna I think it was still initially in Oligan Solskjaer's plans anyway you know to recommend uh, two uh, new um, additions um, in that midfield you know where to currently uh, come in um, people are still talking um, about uh, Yari Tillemans uh, but like I said um, about uh, Yari Tillemans it's looking uh, very very uh, imminent, imminent that he's going to be uh, going uh, to Leicester I think Leicester are set to get him in a £40 million pound, uh, club £40 million, uh, club record deal and all that because Leicester um, have been um, in talks you know with Monaco uh, for several weeks um, of course because obviously Leicester did say 
Kane or to Monaco. They wanted to uh, get him um, on a permanent uh, deal because obviously, you know, Leicester, um, he had been um, on loan, you know, with Leicester, you know, uh, since January. So he's had around, what, five or six months of experience um, under his belt in the Premier League. And he was uh, he, he was really, really good, you know, throughout um, his loan spell uh, with Leicester. Obviously, he has returned uh, to Monaco now, but I think Yori Tillemans um, has confirmed he will not be uh, staying uh, with Monaco uh, next season. Uh, but I think Leicester um, are on the brink um, of getting um, a deal um, or the line for him. And like I said, you know, Monaco do value him at around uh, £40 million. Pounds. I think he's under contract uh, with Monaco um, until 2022. But he does still say Manchester United are in there for him. He said we have, you know, made contact uh, with his representatives um, over the possible uh, move uh, to Manchester United uh, this summer. Also Tottenham have been in there for him. Also Manchester City um, have been in there for him. Um, very, very good player with Jory Tillman's again. I think he would be um, a good uh, replacement uh, for Paul Popper. But I do believe now you've got to say more than likely now he's out of the equation because it's looking like a Leicester um, are closing in um, on your uh, Tillemans um, and all that. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of talks going on um, at least um, in the last uh, couple of days um, in regards uh, to Saul Neguez now from Atletico Madrid. Now, I actually believe Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United have identified him um, as, as, as our uh, number one uh, target you know, to actually you know, replace uh, Paul Pogba at the football club. Now, I've been updating you about Saul Neguez um, in, in the last couple of days, obviously. Uh, obviously, you know, recent reports have just come out about Saul Neguez and uh, obviously he's previously you know, been linked to a move uh, to Manchester City. But I think actually looking at it, Atletico Madrid are reluctant you know, to um, offload Saul Neguez. Has. I think the only way they'll offload uh, Solo and Aguirre is if his current uh, uh, release cause um, is triggered and his release cause um, is around um, £135 million. Pounds. So he's, obviously he's going to cost you um, stag a staggering um, amount of money, um, Solo and Aguirre, because they've like a Madrid won't sell him of course, unless um, his current uh, release cause um, is triggered. Solo and Aguirre um, is only uh, 24 uh, years um, of age. Um, obviously he's, he can play as a central um, or a defensive uh, midfielder. I think he has spent uh, the entire term of his career uh, with Atletico Madrid, you know, graduated from their youth system um, and all that, and I think he's gone to Make um, over two hundred odd appearances for Athletic Madrid. I think Manchester United um, have made a touch base, a touch base uh, with his uh, representatives um, and all that. I think Manchester United touch base uh, with Saul Nagy's uh, representatives, but I think you know Athletic Madrid, you know, will demand them um, his release cause uh, to be uh, triggered if, of course, um, if they are willing uh, to currently um, offload him. Um, obviously, Saul Nagy has um, a couple of years ago signed a new nine-year contract uh, with Athletic Madrid. I still believe now um, he's got around uh, seven years is it uh, left um, on his uh, contract. Uh, maybe he won't see out uh, you know the you know the remainder um, of his contract term and all that because he's got seven years left on it. But maybe he won't, he won't stay with Athletic Madrid uh, for another uh, seven years. Um, I'm not too sure. Uh, but just now saying, so you know, Manchester United um, are in there for him. Supposed to be a pretty uh, decent uh, player um, and all that. So do you think he would be um, a good, um, adequate uh, replacement uh, for Paul Pogba? So I do believe now we've identified Tony Gears as our number one, you know, to replace uh, Paul Pogba um, at the football club. But there has been so many uh, midfielders um, on our current um, agenda because obviously we do know when Paul Pogba leaves, you know, we're going we're gonna to lack that creativeness in that midfield. Obviously we do know Ander Herrera um, has left, so obviously we're going to need a um, replacement uh, for him as well. And you could say when Ander Herrera was here, he was allegedly, you know, one of our best players, you know, since um, at the uh, you know, Alex Ferguson uh, retired them um, and all that. Um but um, yeah, but I do expect Manchester United you know, to get rid of around five or six players this summer. Like I said, we've got to sell players. That's very, very essential. And we do know Valencia's left after he served 10 years with Manchester United. Like I said, Ander Herrera's left on a free transfer. Diamond and Rojo, they're still here. I do believe Manchester United need to uh, get rid of them. And I think we can generate around 25 or £30 million pounds, uh, for their uh, departures because Diamond and Rojo have both enjoyed difficult uh, times um, at the club. Um, obviously, you know, Diamond hasn't really been given the chance. And with Rojo, you know, his Manchester United career has been mainly... You know, a bad his, his Manchester United career has been badly affected. You know, the amount of injuries um, he has uh, sustained um, and all that. Um, so yeah, I think we need to get rid of uh, both um, of them. Uh, I think De Gea is now probably staying. Um, I also think uh, uh, we also know that one matter um, is staying. Um, with Alexis Sanchez, uh, I'm still a bit sceptical about him leaving Manchester United um, at the moment because I think the club um, are finding it very difficult, you know, to get rid of um, Alexis Sanchez. Obviously, you know, reflecting on his substantial wages, you know, he's, he's going to be very difficult, you know, to offload him because I don't think many teams, or if any, you know, would be able to afford um, Alexis uh, Sanchez um, outright because obviously Sanchez is on 400 grand a week, you know, potentially rising up to 500 grand a week, uh, you know, based on the image rights um, and the bonuses. And I think Sanchez's wages um, are having a really bad effect um, on the football club. Um, obviously, 
They're having a really bad um, effect um, on the football club. You know, he's the highest player player of the club. He's the highest uh, player uh, player um, in the Premier League. And Sanchez has been here since what January uh, 2018, and he's just been uh, so um, inconsistent. And he hasn't lived up to expectations, and he hasn't been the fundamental player as well. I thought he would have been, you know, reflecting what he did in his four years of Arsenal before he came to Manchester United. He even played under Pep Guardiola's guidance uh, when he was younger um, at Barcelona and thrived under Guardiola's guidance at Barcelona. But he just hasn't replicated any of this form um, at Manchester United. And you know, Sanchez has just been so inconsistent uh, for Manchester United. He doesn't have a future at the club anyway. You know, he's thirty. Oh, he's a thirty-one now. Um, he has uh, lost uh, that yard of pace initially. Um, isn't uh, first choice um, anyway. So I think the club have got to find a way to get rid of Sanchez. And you know, and I think he's also become injury prone since he's come to Manchester United. He's sustained uh, quite um, a few um, injuries. Um, but yeah, I think we've definitely you now got to find a way to get rid of him. I think the only way Manchester United can get rid of Sanchez is if we're, you know, if we are willing to let him go on a long season loan and we come to some kind of agreement um, of paying him um, half um, of his wages off. But we've definitely you now got to get rid of him. Um, obviously, as I've been updating you um, on a regular basis um, in regards uh, to Romelu Lukaku. Now, I think Romelu Lukaku is one of the problematic players at Manchester United, and I do believe Manchester United um, have got to get rid of uh, Romelu Lukaku. Now, um, we do know that Lukaku um, has been relentlessly, you know, linked to a move to Inter Milan. Um, obviously, Lukaku's agent, you know, give us an update um, earlier on uh, this week, and he. <coughs> <coughs> Uh, he gives an update earlier on this week, sorry for the cough, and he did say um, Inter Milan um, are desperate, you know, to currently uh, sign him, but uh, Lukaku's agent um, has classified uh, the move um, as complicated. So because obviously, you know, we're, we're you know we're demanding um you know we've we've put a huge price tag um, on Romelu Lukaku, and you know we've said uh, we want um, around uh, eighty million pounds. Um, obviously, you know, Inter Milan um, are trying to um, offload a couple of their players, you know, to help them generate funds, you know, to meet that um, eighty million pound uh, valuation. Um, obviously, you know, uh, Inter Milan have, have, have inquired about getting Lukaku. Um, on a two-year loan, uh, with then the obligation to buy for the further £60 million pounds, um, at the end um, of the loan as well. But obviously, no, Manchester United um, are not willing to uh, enter entertain uh, this offer because we are only willing to offload uh, Romelu Lukaku um, on a uh, permanent uh, deal um, and all that. But like I said, he has been relentlessly linked to move uh, to Inter Milan. Um, obviously, no reports uh, came out, uh, was it, uh, last month, saying that he said, he said um, allegedly Lukaku had agreed personal terms with Inter Milan. It also said he agreed, he agreed um, a deal uh, with um, around um, £188,000 a week. But obviously no fee has come to an agreement yet with Inter Milan um, or Manchester United. Um Obviously, uh, we are unwilling to accept uh, swap deals, of course, uh, that Inter Milan um, have offered us because Inter Milan have tried offering us, you know, Mario Cardi for Romelu Lukaku. They've also tried offering us Ivan Posic uh, for Romelu Lukaku, but Man Manchester United are not entertaining um, any of these uh, current um, offers. So we said we want £80 million, pounds, so basically we're looking to recoup the money that we did pay for him from Everton um, a couple of years ago because we did pay £75 million pounds for him. Obviously, there were several add-ons included in the deal, which do potentially rise it to £90 million. Pounds. So Lukaku is our second most expensive player, and um, obviously he's still got three years uh, left um, his contract uh, with Manchester United but obviously Antonio Conte has identified Romelu Lukaku as his uh, number one uh, target and um, obviously you know Romelu Lukaku recently described Antonio Conte as the best manager um, in the world um, so obviously Lukaku was keen on playing him um, under Antonio Conte's uh, guidance um, obviously reflecting back a couple of years ago when Antonio Conte was the manager um, of Chelsea um, obviously you know at that point you know he wanted Romelu Lukaku but obviously you know he ended up uh, making another move uh, to Manchester United but I do believe that Romelu Lukaku's um, a agent uh, um, has obviously you know, been um, in Milan uh, quite um, a few times. He's held negotiations with uh, the Inter Milan um, officials because I think Luka uh, Lukaku's agent um, is doing um, everything he can you know, to try and get um, his client um, a move uh, to uh, Inter Milan um, and all that. But the fee uh, seems to be uh, the stumbling block um, at this uh, current uh, present uh, time. Um, but we've basically said, you know, we want around uh, £80 million. Pounds. Obviously, Lukaku's been at the club um, a couple of uh, years. Obviously, he scored 42 goals um, in 96 games for the club um, in all competitions. Lukaku was exceptional um, in his first season, but didn't really replicate this form, um, of course, um, in his uh, second season um, and all that. Um, but since Solskjaer's coming anyway, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's preference um, has been uh, Marcus Rashford um, ahead of uh, Romelu Lukaku. And I do believe that Romelu Lukaku um, is reluctant, you know, to play um, a backup uh, role uh, to uh, Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford, but I do believe that Lukaku's ratio is still very good in the Premier League. You know, his pedigree is very, very good um, in the Premier League um, and all that. Uh, but you do know that I've uh, got uh, strong uh, reservations um, about him. But I think we sell Pogba, we sell Lukaku. I think we can generate around £200 million pounds, uh, for their uh, current uh, departures. But obviously, there's been quite a few players on our agenda. You know, who should, who could, you know, replace uh, Romelu Lukaku at the football club? Obviously, there's been talks of Wizem Ben Yedder. Like I said, with Ben Yedder, I don't think, think there's a lot of credibility in Wizem Ben Yedder coming to Manchester United. Everything's going to be quite honest. And it did say anywhere... 
Wizen Banyad has moved is dependent on, you know, what happens uh, with Romelu or Lukaku, but I don't think Wizen Banyad, you know, will uh, come to uh, Manchester United. Came out earlier on this week saying that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, identified, you know, Leon's Moussa Dembele and Lil's Nicholas Pepe as potential uh, replacements uh, for uh, Lukaku. So obviously we are right now uh, replacements uh, for him. But hopefully, like I said, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, you know, can take uh, Manchester United uh, forward. I'm very, very hopeful um, he can. I hope he's got the stature, you know, to c get us in uh, that commanding position. Because obviously, you know, we just want to be back, you know, to be um, a competitive um, elite uh, level uh, football club. And I like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know he's a great player for Manchester United uh, for 11 years. You know, he did uh, flourish um, under um, Alex Ferguson's uh, guidance. And I do believe he is, you know, following um, Alex Ferguson's uh, philosophy. And, you know, he has got a bit of experience um, as a manager, a bit of managerial experience. Not to the highest level, obviously. You know, he did win a couple of Norwegian titles with Mould. You know, he, did, he only had a short tenure with Cardiff. Didn't even work out for him at Cardiff. You know, he managed the Manchester United reserve team uh, for a couple of years. So he watched this team, this, some of this team, this day and age. You know, grow um, and develop him um, and all that. So he does uh, know uh, the club um, inside out. And I hope you know he can take Manchester United forward. Like I did say, we are still one of the biggest clubs um, in the world. You know, we are the most successful team um, in England. You know, historically, you know, we have been playing catch up for the last five or six years, but we have been a toxic club and. We've been a toxic club because obviously, you know, we've been mismanaged, you know, this is the main factor reason, you know, why we've uh, been um, underachieving. And, you know, we haven't won much too well, you know, since uh, 2013 when Ferguson retired. Obviously, we haven't won the league since 2013. Um, obviously, we didn't win out under David Moyes, really, you know, won the FA Cup under Louis van Gaal, really. Um, obviously, you know, won uh, the, the Europa League um, and League Cup um, in, you know, in the, under the Jose Mourinho, really. Obviously, that came um, in Jose Mourinho's uh, first season. Um, and obviously, it didn't work out under Jose Mourinho, obviously. Even though he has got that winning pedigree um, and all that, and he's won stuff everywhere um, he's been as Jose Mourinho, it didn't work out under him because obviously the board weren't backing the signings that he wanted to recommend in. He had bad disputes with the board, you know, he had a bad disputes there uh, with the players and some of the players, and this is why it didn't work out under him. And we spent just under four hundred million pounds um, on eleven players um, under uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, but like I said, you know, regardless of who our manager is, you know, no one is going to ever follow, you know, Alex Ferguson's legacy. You know, we're never going to achieve them um, of what we achieved them um, under Alex Ferguson, you know, for 20 odd years um, of current uh, success, you know, that we did uh, currently um, have. But like I said, it is going to be difficult for us to attract players to elite level because obviously, you know, we're not in our Champions League uh, football uh, for next season. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to build the squad, you know, worthy um, of the club's uh, mystery. And we do need to re revitalise uh, the squad. And that's uh, very, very um, essential indeed. But the main part of this video, you know, was to give you the breaking news um, about uh, Paul Popper, now he wants to leave Manchester United, um, his agent Riley Ola um, has told her at the Times that, you know, Paul Popper is in the process um, of leaving near the club, he's going to put a transfer request in him and all that, and um, obviously he's had more speculation anyway about his long-term future, because obviously Paul Popper has been um, absent uh, from pre-season training uh, this week, um, as that has uh, currently uh, confirmed, but I probably think he'll go to Real Madrid, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. There's still rumours of him going to uh, Juventus and that, Juventus are willing to offload a couple of their players, you know, to go to, uh, you know, for their bid uh, to sign uh, Paul Popper. But yeah, always lots to talk about um, on this uh, current, uh, channel. Like I said, there could be a change of scenery now with Sean Longstaff. Um, obviously now Newcastle, uh, Newcastle have indicated he's not for sale. Manchester United are preparing to put a bid in for him. This is coming out from Sky Sports. But reportedly he's going to reportedly cost us at least £50 million, pounds, uh, maybe um, even more. And I think Manchester United you know, would be reluctant uh, to currently uh, pay that. So anyway, guys, drop me comments like below on the channel. Um, if you do, consider a subscribe, um, as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.